Hello, my name is Joelle. I'm a 21 year old student, educational sciences from the Netherlands and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I want to talk you through my note-taking system and I've been taking notes for a really long time. Ever since I was in high school, I was always taking notes in class. But this year, after I started studying educational sciences, I've learned a lot more about how to make effective educational resources. And of course, notes are also a form of educational resources. So I challenged myself to apply what I learned to my own note-taking system. So the way I did this is using Mayer's 12 principles of multimedia learning and I've been super happy with how it turned out so today I wanted to share this with you. So in this video I will not only explain to you how I take my notes but also how I apply these principles and the science behind why this works. So that if this note taking system is not completely for you, you might hopefully still find some inspiration to make your own note taking system more effective. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And then let's get on to the video. So the supplies I use are very simple. I personally take digital notes, so I use my tablet. But the same system also works with a regular notebook, two different colored pens, a highlighter, a pencil, and an eraser. So first, I want to explain something to you about my goal for taking notes. So by taking notes, I try to summarize all the information that I learned in class or while doing readings. And I do this to sort of create a study guide for myself so that when I actually have to study for the test, I don't have to go back and reference all those pages of readings and flip through all those PowerPoints again and know that I have everything that I need to know for the exam right there. So this very closely relates to one of the 12 principles of multimedia learning, which is the coherence principle. And this principle says that you need to eliminate all the material that you don't really need to obtain the learning goal because you will still put mental effort into trying to process all that extra information that you don't even actually need and of course it can be quite difficult to know what is really necessary and what is not but usually the key components of any class are main concepts and their definitions, process descriptions, some main ideas or debates in the fields, formulas and all those kinds of things. And try to not waste too much time on contemplating what is absolutely necessary and what is not. And just write down whatever you think would be relevant for this class and the assignments and exams that you will have to do. And the second reason that I take notes is to improve my understanding of the material. And this also relates to one of the principles of multimedia learning, which is the self-explanation principle. And this principle says that if you explain something to yourself, you will improve your understanding of the material. And your notes, of course, are sort of a form of self explanation because you write down in your own words what the teacher says or what you have been reading and then very important notes are not for the aesthetics I know I've fallen trapped to this spending way too much time on making my notes look pretty but pretty notes are really not the goal I definitely try to make mine as neat as possible so that I find them pleasant to use but it's really not necessary to spend any time on decoration beyond what makes you want to reread your notes so the general way that I organize my notes is that I have one digital notebook for every class. But this of course doesn't have to be a digital notebook, this can also be a regular notebook or a binder. And then within these notebooks I cluster all my notes per topic. And this is related to Mayer's spatial contiguity principle, which says that the less time you have to spend going back and forth through related material, the more time and effort you can spend on actually integrating the material from two different resources. So by having related information close together, I can easily scan back and forth and in this way more easily improve my understanding of the material. So I use a two column layout and I do this for a number of reasons. Firstly, it makes it easier for me to write on a tablet because I can zoom in further on my tablet and don't have to write past the end of the screen, if that makes sense. And then it also forces me a bit more to be short because it quickly looks like you've written down a lot if you use a two column layout. And I also find that it's easier to fit images within your notes without creating this awkward white space. However, a two column layout can look a bit crowded, so I do intentionally leave some white space around the columns so that the page doesn't look too full. So then I always start my notes by writing a title and a subtitle and I write the title very big so that my notes are easy to recognize. And then in the subtitle I first write an R if the notes are from a reading and an L if the notes are from a lecture. And then a week or a class number depending on how many classes I have per week and whether topics are discussed for multiple lectures or not. And if relevant the author of my reading or the lecturer of my class. So then the general format of my notes are subsections with headers. 
And this closely relates to Mayer's second thing principle, which says that you need to divide up your material in bite-sized chunks so that you can process one chunk at a time without getting overloaded with too much information at once. And if the header is also a concept for which I need to know a definition, I write down the definition directly after the header. So that the concept and the definition are clearly paired together. And within the subsections, I work with bullet points. And this relates to Mayer's signaling principle, which says that if you add cues that highlight the organization of information, this helps you organize the information in your brain as well. So with this bullet point format, I can, for example, easily distinguish main points from sub points. And then I use different kinds of bullet points to quickly indicate what kind of information a point contains. So I use a dot for a general point. I use numbers when the order of points is important. I use a plus to indicate a pro or an argument in favor of a certain idea. And then I use a minus to indicate a con or an argument against a certain idea. I use an arrow to indicate a causal chain, a star to indicate an example, and then I use an arrow that sort of starts up to indicate that something relates to something that has been said before. And it's one I especially used a lot when I was still making notes on paper, because then I could not easily switch around the order of what I had written down. But now I still use it if I have to be fast during lectures. And then I use my highlighter to further structure my notes. So I fully highlight key terms and then I underline with my highlighter some less important terms. And I also use my regular pen to underline any points that are important but that have disappeared a bit between all the other points. So again, this is a form of the signaling principle and it helps draw your attention to the most important material. And then I also, of course, sometimes include images, graphs, tables, or formulas in my notes. And this is actually a form of the multimedia principle, which states that you learn better if you study from a combination of words and pictures. So whenever I draw an image or a formula or anything of that sort, I make sure to leave enough space around the image so that I can integrate any notes about the picture inside of the picture. And this, again, is a form of the spatial contiguity principle, which says that you study better if the material is integrated because it reduces the effort that you need to scan back and forth between different sources of information. And whenever an image is not part of an example, I also make a border around the image to highlight it to make sure that it really stands out. And then making images or graphs is also a form of the generative drawing principle, which says that you can improve your understanding if you make your own graphical representations of the material. But of course, drawing is a pretty time consuming process. So whenever you make any sort of drawing or graphical representation, make sure to keep it as simple as possible because otherwise you put effort into making it look pretty when you could also have spent that effort actually learning the material. Function definitely is more important than form here. And making sure to keep your drawing simple is also a form of the coherence principle, which says that you need to eliminate any sort of information that is not necessary. So then, generally people advise to not include examples in your notes. But actually, according to the worked example principle, engaging with worked examples can actually improve your understanding of what you are learning. However, this only holds for examples that actually resemble tasks that you will have to complete on your exam, for example. So if this is the case and your lecturer writes down an example, make sure to note it down as well. And then I also like to indicate the thinking steps in the example in a different color than the example itself, because in the end, this particular example is of course not the most important thing that you need to know. What you need to know is how you go about an example like this. And by indicating the thinking steps in a different color, you make these stand out more than the actual example, which again is a smart use of the signaling principle. And then if during the lecture or the reading I have any questions, I simply write the question down close to the related information in my notes. And if I did this on paper, I would use a pencil for this because then I could easily erase the question after I have found my answer to it. So yeah, that was my note-taking system explained. I hope that you found it helpful, that you have learned something today and that you maybe are inspired to try the system out for yourself. If you find this video helpful, then make sure to like it and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you're going to try out the system, let me know in the comments let me know how it goes or if you have another note-taking system that works really well for you please also feel free to share thank you so much for taking the time to see this video and i hope to see you in the next one mm -hmm.